So, we'll start with the biochemical tissue salt. Apart from our homeopathic viewpoint of learning, we are dealing with different uh, methodology of applications of the remedies. This system is introduced by uh, Dr. Schusler in 18th century from learning from the Hanemans and the other followers. Out of this, he found something which is important for the cell biology. And in the cell biology, he found that the certain substance which are needed for the maintenance, development, growth and uh, equilibrium of homeostasis of the human frame. So for that he has found that there are few minerals which are essential for a development, growth and the maintenance of our human body and as well as it helps in the maintenance of the health. So he found this system, a different system based on the law of deficiency. When this mineral salt are absent in a human body, it will create certain disorders and that disorders may lead to disease, may lead to certain symptoms or may lead to certain pathological point of view. So we are going into journey of this different kind of system today. So this is what biochemical tissue solves. So what is the biochemistry? So biochemistry is a discovery, the claim discovery that the abnormal state of one or more of the 12 chemical substance which Schusler has found that the, there are essential spell component which is for the maintenance of the human body. So this is 12 tissue remedies enter into the makeup of the normal human body and occurs in the disease and the administration of this disturbed cell salt or the chemical substance at fault and there is a fault. Fault means uh, there is a deficiency of this salt. So in a proper doses then the scientific therapeutic measures that can correct it and therapeutically speaking that it is curing the disease. This is what he found. It is a very simplest way of understanding disease as well as prescribing the required amount of that salt in a proper minimum doses to cure the disease. Okay? So this is called biochemistry. The, it is a really the system of therapeutic that goes hand in hand with the pathology. So there is a pure pathology, is a branch of biology which defines the particular perturbations of cells. Now uh, we have a question, what is the perturbations of the cells? That means the cell. Now we have to understand the cell. So cell has a certain uh, physiological functions. So cell has a cell wall cell apparatus inside that cells, there is a protoplasm and there is the outer area which is called as extracellular fluids, okay, so that is the environment. So when <coughs> the cell environment is disturbed by the certain molecular changes in the either outside of the cells or either inside of the cells which create molecular imbalance into the cellular mechanisms and that due to that molecular mechanism the cellular functions altered and initially the functions altered which is not adjusted or which is not adapted for a time being then cells started changing the structure also and this is creating the pathological phenomena so this is what something we are learning today that we have to maintain the cell protoplasm now what Schusler has found that these are the biochemical salt which is used mostly in the protoplasm and the cell wall. And that protoplasm provides a proper amount of the nutrition and proper amount of the cellular environment. And that environment helps to function properly by the cell apparatus. Different, different. It is a lysosome, it is a Golgi, it is everything, uh, mitochondria. So in that form, the cell become healthy. And in reverse, when the cell become healthy, the functions become healthy, the structure become normal and in, out of that the human being become equilibrium, homeostasis is maintained and the health is restored. This is the simplest way of understanding. Thus the pathology that point out that it is something that disturbances in the cell life that as near as the origin of the disease. So when, how disease is started? 
there is the environment of the cell is disturbed micromolecular atom level there is a cellular disturbances it may be a protoplasm disturbances it may be any kind of disturbances of a deficiency of the required substance which leading to the disease or pathology so the biochemistry permits that this is the only scientific key to cure so when we change the biochemical formations of the cells it is the only key to the cure the system okay by based on this uh, phenomenon he found that this is the only scientific therapeutic method to prescribe and you alter the cellular mechanism and then the cell has good to respond now what we are nowadays learning this is what it was written in 18th century now what we are learning nowadays that uh, biology of belief dr bruce lipton has said that there is no brain in the cell nucleus something which is outside the nucleus and it is something called as the brain of the cell is called as cell wall of and there is a sensory perception from the cell wall so cell react to the environment they are adapted to so there are many experiment has done that when cell is put into certain stressful situation they goes into shrinkage when the cell is put into certain cheerful or happy moments the cell can uh, vibrate in a different way so this suggests that the environment if you correct then the cell biology has changed and then cell biology has changed cell is going to restore gradually and the healing takes place so this is what nowadays understanding of biology of the cells so we connect this our knowledge of biochemic to the uh, newer understanding of the cell biology by the bruce lipton so science sees that the root of what main term disease is that the perturbation of the cell life and it is said by foxy so same way what uh, dr bruce lipton said that the environment can change the cell perception and when the perception has changed the cell has disturbed that molecular changes and when the molecular has changed is disturbed it create a disease and if you uh, change the perceptions by stimulating the outer world which we call as epigenetic a study of epigenetic it is beyond the genes when the gene is active gene has some encoding which is according to that that encoding they uh, perceive the environment and defend but when the epigenetic has changed when the environment you can change that gene has to react in a normal way not in a defensive way and gene has feels nature so this is what the root is something that it is the perturbations of the cell life are you getting me what i am telling you so this is what the germ idea came into the suzer's mind when he read the molescott work of a cycle of life the effect that without the basis yielding gelatins there can no true bone no true bone without bone earth no cartilage without cartilage salt and blood without iron no saliva without potassium chloride so when you think see what our physical uh, sir has tell that the human being is made up of system system are made up of organ organs are made up of tissue tissues are made up of cells and cells are made up of the nucleus and the environment so same way no bone is without their bone earth there is a food sheet what sir has maintained that the food sheet once you give a proper food and nutrition to cells the cell grow and once you give a improper food or impure food or a toxic material to cell cell goes into shrinkage so this is what something that suzler has come into idea that there is some earthy matter which is present in every cell and that earthy matters is something that there is a ash of the human body form and it is another basis so it is a food basis and this 12 ele uh, essential element constitute the earthy or mineral basis of the cells of the body so he found that there are 13 million 12 million uh, minerals which are basis of the earth or this is basis of the food sheet so when we change our food sheet the environment change and environment change into the cellular normal functioning so when the disturbances or deficiency or abnormality of this salt it causes disease so definitions by schuzler is something that this salt is disturbed or deficiency or some abnormal metabolism which lead to disease and when we administer the needed amount of that salt into the particular 
environment or a human being so it restore the atom and when they restore the atom it will rebuild the health again so this is what the schuler's idea from this cycle of life so biochemical method what schuler says that biochemical method supplies the curative effort of a nature with the natural material lacking in the part affected it means the inorganic salt so this is something that you are going to supply the lacking material now very important aspect that schuler uses homeopathic way of potentization not the raw materials or a crude form why because when we go to the understanding that we usually take a salt in our daily use of the food though we are taking a salt then also some individual at the micromolecular level there is a deficiency of the sodium chloride or there is a deficiency of uh, elemental sodium chloride so when you give toxic amount or we give the table salt in a crude form it will not going to change the environment of the cell and it is not going to create the problem so that what schuler has used schuler has used the dynamite form of that salt and when we give the dynamite form of that salt it will change the atomic level of the cellular mechanism and that is the reason that schuler used homeopathy into biochemical system okay are you getting me what he found the law is a different system but he uses the homeopathic principle into it that the you cannot give see when the person is having a iron deficiency and you prescribe a iron tablet it will not going to correct that because it is a crude form it cannot absorb but when you give the iron phosphate in the triturated form and this micromolecular atom will change the biochemistry of the cells and it absorb very readily and easily with a lactose formation and then the biochemistry change and he will get the benefit so this is what schuler use homeopathic idea into this biochemical system so he said this proper uh, method that it supplies the curative effort of the nature with the natural material lacking in the part affected very important aspect this law is law of definition so what is the necessity of infinitesimal dose I, as i mentioned that he used a small doses because in a larger doses it cannot change the physiological aspect so in a smaller doses it provide a chemico physiological necessity and when the every biochemical remedy must be thus attenuated that's why he used homeopathic principle of potentization so that the functions of the healthy cell may not be disturbed and yet the functional disturbances present may be equalized you know very important as functions of the healthy cells is not disturbed yet there is a functional disturbances in the atomic level it will be equalized with this potentized medicines though even given in the crude form it cannot change so this is what the necessity of infinitesimal doses so now Uh, he mentioned that dose is needed what what principle of uh, homeopathy dr master hanerman has told us that once the medicine has prescribed and you find the improvement stop the stimulating the individual don't prescribe you prescribe a non medicated substance either a placebo or a certain remedies which is non medical in nature okay so but in that way of understanding of law of deficiency that means once the patient has improvement started you has conclusion that this is the only sort which is required for the development and that is why he started that you have to repeat again and again and again and once the patient is restored fully then you stop the medication so this is what dose and repetitions of the remedy in biochemistry now he has given same principle to the what master hanuman said in that in a acute case you can prescribe very frequent repetitions and in the chronic cases you can prescribe three times a day so in a, in a acute cases he said take hourly or every two hour or sometime in as emergency you can use in a 10 to 15 minute durations and what was a dose so dose is something that the p size so once you uh, make that grain into grain or when when you find it in a tablet form 
so it is a three to four pills or a six pills you can prescribe at a time as a single dose okay in a chronic case it has taken three to four times either on the see now he is also mentioned that either you have to prescribe dry on term must give the patient to suck properly so this micro molecules of the cells is being absorbed by the tongues and the saliva and the digestive system it goes into the absorption pattern and after that absorption that will correct the cellular mechanism where it is required okay so same way it is either given dry on the tongue or you can dissolve it in the water and the water is to be taken so this is what very important aspect of understanding again he has mentioned that in my practice in my practice i generally use six extractions of the 12 by level but the two remedy which i use is in a 12x potency higher version the so one is a ferrum fast and second one is a pavia flow because in their lifetime experience he found that 6x will not help them in this process so he started saturating more 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 and he goes to the 12x and then he found that this is wonderfully acting in shortest durations with the most harmonious operation will be happen and reliable for the cure so that's why he mentioned that once you use ferrum fast or calcarea fast you can prescribe in a 12x potency okay so this is what the clear cut idea about the dose and repetition now we will go one by one the understanding of the each and every salts uh, all the salts which are essential for the understanding so when we understood this 12 salts we have certain ideas <coughs> say for example how to remember this is very easy the, this in a practice you have to understand just the pathological process what is the things happening into it and when you use this what is the thing happening into it and then prescribe then you will find that this is the only remedy which is needed in this case that is the only thing so for understanding of this all the salts you have to understand that this remedy is indicated in certain disorder even the disease name anything out of it but if you have a clinical understanding that this is the only thing salt is required so for that i must make you very easy for understanding so as we have learned the biochemic that in that biochemic we have given the color of the discharge many a time okay so we have to remember few few things very easily say for example sulfur so what was the sulfur color yellow it was yellow in color as a source so when you find calcarea sulf natrium sulf kali sulf there is yellow color of everything just to differentiate everything calcarea sulf has yellowness kali sulf has golden yellowness or natrium sulf has yellow greenishness very easy to remember so when you find this you can easily recall it now when you understand the muriaticum so what was the muriaticum muriaticum is something a salt okay chlorine so chlorine is colorless you know chlorine is colorless so when you put into something say for example salt salt is how what color of salt is natrium it is white so when you remember mu you have to remember it is a white color so discharge is white so when there is a natrium mu it is a clear transparent when there is a kali mu it is a white or gray okay there is no calcarea mu there is no ferrum mu there is no this is something so you have to remember very easily now when you have a phosphorus now what is the phosphorus color phosphorus has two color it is a yellow phosphorus or a red phosphorus so when you think of natrium phos the biliousness yellow color discharge when you think calcarea phos again there is a calcarea phos there is a yellow color and when you think mac phos there is also yellow color okay so this is what you have to remember very easily that from this chart the remedy differentiation is very easy now you have to understand the pathophysiological action of each and every remedy so we will go one by one into detail that how this remedy has act on certain pathology and when you have to prescribe it is very easy to differentiate and 
no need to remember all the therapeutics of the biochemical system you just understand the patients just understand the pathology just understand the, what was the pathology happening and what was the character of the pathology and when you find the character of the pathology is this according to that you have to use the salt and that salt is prescribed the correction as the cellular level will lead to corrections of the pathology and pathology reverses okay so we will go into details calcarea floor the remedy calcium chloride floor for flooring of lime everybody known to that so what is calcarea floor mostly it is found on the surface of the bones very important aspect that where it is found and what was the role so when there is found in the surface of the bone enamel of the bone again it is enamel is the surface then the uh, elastic fibers the elastic fibers you can found in the elasticity of the any structure it is in the connective tissue there is a elastic fiber it is in the blood vessel there is a elastic fibers okay so what was the happening there is two thing is happening in the elastic fibers one thing it is a elastic fiber has been increased so there is a fibrin is increased so when there is a fibrin is increased there is a hardness and when there is a elastin is less there is a looseness okay so in calcarea for you have to remember two pathology first when the disturbances and deficiency happen into the body of this salt it produce lumpy more or less hard growth so when you find any pathology with the hardness either a gland is hard either a structure is hard either a induration either a fibrin is hard it is a growth is hard so that you can use calcarea floor as a salt now schuzler has mentioned the when you find cancer heart just prescribe calcarea floor no other remedy is needed without this salt so very important aspect of and calcarea floor is given in 12x potential not in the 6x potential very important fine so this is what when you find the hardened so when there is a hardness so it is a hard growth horny growth hard crust with a crack hand then there is a fibrin is there hardness there is a crack in the hand so when we find the person with the hard hand rough hand you can directly think of it is a calcarea floor deficiency is there okay hardened memory glands and other parts so there is a hardness everywhere because of fibrin excess another point osseous bone tumor now it is you have to understand the bone so bone has a two component one is the uh, bo bone medulla and one is the outer bone okay so bone medulla is for the development of the blood cells you all know it is a nutritive part of the bone it is called as the mother of the bone and outer bone it is called as the strength of strength which gives a uh, depositions of the calcium and minerals and it gives a support to the body so it is a father part of the bone so bone is a two component so when there is a father part of the bone is affected that means the bone calcium is deposited outer side so we have the pathology is calcaneum spur we have the pathology uh, what we call as exostosis so when you find exostosis hardness calcaneum spur okay then and then the calcarea floor is the remedy so osseous bone tumor from where from injury there is a glandular swelling cataract of the eyes okay the gum boils displacement and relaxed uterus now this is what something that here here the fibrin is excess here the elastin is less so in elastin less there is a ligament has become loose so due to looseness there is a displacement so displacement is the retroversion and relaxed condition including the prolapse of the uterus so when you find the prolapse so same way sagging of abdomen abdomen become loose okay hardness harden exudation any secretions exudation is the proteinous materials which become hard stuff then you can think of calcarea floor hemorrhagic hemorrhoidal nodes again hemorrhage is associated hemorrhage because of elastins dilatations okay so there is a hemorrhoidal node very cause when again elastin so all this is originated from the elastic fibers and bone covering so when we have when we have the problem with the covering or outer surface you can think of calcarea floor when the problem inside the bone so for example the medullary aspect of the bone is affected the remedy change the remedy is calcarea floor okay 
So, by, by understanding this pathology, we have to understand uh, this is the things where we can use this remedy. Okay? So, we have one, root, one line is hardness of the fibrin and looseness of the elastin fiber, which is the indications of the calcarea floor. Okay? So, due to that, we have a lot of, uh, lot of pathology like hardness swelling of the bone. So, exostosis, varicose vein, wheat law, indurations of the testicle, it is something like induration, hard gland, suppuration, psoriasis, psoriasis with the hardness. If psoriasis with the much displamations, you can directly think of the cali cells. Psoriasis with the hard and crackness, you can think of this. Psoriasis with the postular eruption, you can think of calcareous cell. So, this is what you have to differentiate the disease and their characteristic. Okay? Psoriasis with the blood, there is a different remedy. Okay? Psoriasis with the septic condition, the remedy is Caliphos. When there is a septicemia, you can think of Caliphos. Okay? So you have to understand disease's name is same, but the characteristic of that disease is a different. So internal piles, ozena, eczema, nodes, gout, uh, defect in the enamel of the teeth, backache, corneal uh, affections, cataract, and bone bruises. The injury to bone. So this is calcarea floor pathology. I am not going into detail of each and every remedy, but I am just giving you the understanding of pathological point of view where directly you can think of this salt is to be prescribed. So we have calcarea phos. So calcium phosphate, phosphate of lime. <coughs> in the calcarea phos, it is mostly found in all cells specifically in the bone cells and therefore necessary for the normal formation of the new cells. So this is helping in the new cells. So it is mostly found in the inner cell of the bones. So it is the nutritive, it is a mother cell. Whereas calcarea floor is a father cell. Okay? So what happens when this deficiency of this salt is happening? So nutrition is not <coughs> sorry. Nutrition is not maintaining. So when the nutrition is not maintained, the state is developing is called as anemia. The bone is not maintaining the homeostasis or bone is not going to help uh, to regenerate the erythropoiesis, leukopoiesis or the megakaryopoiesis. So this is called as development of the stem cell. So due to this, there is anemia. Due to this, there is a weakened condition and due to this, Mostly it happened after acute disease and delayed formation of the bone in the young and in meeting of the broken bone. So there are two things. It also helps when this salt is deficient because when you understand the calcium phosphorus metabolism, so calcium and phosphorus as the ratio is 1 is to 2. Okay? So this ratio has to be maintained in the bone and when this ratio is not maintained, so bone has loosened their capacity, the bone becomes porous bone become soft, so easily fractured, okay. So in calcarea force you can find easily fractured, so when you find fracture is there, you can prescribe calcarea force because it helps in the kneading of the broken bones. So along with sympatum you can give calcarea force and within 7 days I had a case of the fracture in the radius ulna and uh, that boy has prescribed sympatum and uh, along with sympatum calcarea force and after 8 days of x-ray, the bone mineralization happened very fast. And that is what the understanding that this remedy is beating the broken bone. Okay. Again, it provides nutrition. Why? Because when there is a calcium defi deficiency, it is not going to stimulate the stem cells of the bone and that is going to help in the poiesis of the every cells, stem cells. So this is what giving any state. So when there is an anemic state and low blood state, the condition becomes worsened. So you prescribe it, anemia gets covered and anemia gets covered, the patient bed better and healing started. So it is the remedy, weaker conditions following acute disease. When the person is suffering from the acute disease, after that acute disease he got weak. Because of lack of nutrition, you just prescribe calcarea force, he will recover very fast. So most of convalescence disorders, you can prescribe calcarea force. So broadly, it is the remedy for the weakling, ill-nourished, young or old people having the uh, recats, 
having chlorosis. Chlorosis is a olden term. Nowadays it is called as the anemia. Anemia of a nutritional deficiency. Okay. <coughs> Open fontanelles. Uh, pain accompanied by the formications and numbness. Cramps, cold sweat, convulsions, convulsions of the teething children, stunted child, unhealthy obesity. It has been the cell. It is called as cell wall salt. So it is the protector of the everything. So when there is a needed of every cell, uh, every uh, development or a growth, it is providing the growth. So it is called cell wall salt. So what was the uh, pathology in which you can use this? You can use this calcarea was in the cancer, specifically cancer of the bones. Okay, this is called as sarcoma. Okay, in sarcoma you can use this. When there is a hard cancer of the bones, you can use calcarea fluid. Okay, cata, chlorosis, green sickness. Again, it is because of the lack of nutrition, consumption, rickets, curvature of the spine. Why it is curvature of the spine? Because of lack of bones. So it will bends, bowing of legs. Okay, uh, in the childrens, there is one thing. It is called as hydrocephalus. So hydrocephalus is something that is the accumulations of the water inside, and this is going to bulge, and the head become large. Okay, due to the deficiency of this, this is happening. So it will, when you prescribe uh, calcarea force to the patient, it will. Close the open frontal lining, and it will also absorb the excess water, and it will clear the hydrocephalus. Okay, very important in the clinical practice. Again, albuminuria, anemia, disease state of the bones, broken bones, coloration, emaciation, dentition problem, headache, headache of the schoolboy. We have this. Okay, there is a night sweat. So when you find calcarea force, you have to understand the person is very lean thing. And having a night sweat, and person is restless. These are the classical key point of calcarea force to prescribe. Whereas in calcarea floor, it is the hardness of everything. Okay, <clears throat> perspiration, scrofulous ulcer. So there is a, a affection of the glands, and the glands goes into destructions. So scrofulous ulcer, mostly. The cold, clammy feet and hand. The calcarea has a coldness. Sulphur has a heatness in the particular area. Okay. Tonsil chronically swollen. So when you find the children who have chronically swollen tonsils, after acute inflammation, it goes into chronically swollen tonsils. You can directly think of calcarea force. Why? Because the weakening children, ill-nourished children, has been given nutrition and that is correcting it to relieve this. So when you find the we prescribe tuberculinum tendency to uh, enlarge tonsils, okay? And sometimes we find the baryta calf children. But after baryta calf has given, the children will not respond, and the enlarged tonsils remain same. So in that case, you can use this salt to maintain the again tonsil to the normal layer. So third remedy, the calcarea salt. As Schuster is. Omitting this remedy in the tell uh, tell these two remedies, but uh, due to uh, the follower of the Schuler, they men mention that this remedy is useful in the certain conditions of the body. That's why Schuler has maintained this and put into the twelfth issue. Otherwise, there is eleventh issue only. Okay, but Schuler has remained this. This salt is mostly act on the skin. So in the skin, what it produce? So in the skin, it produces suppuration, and there is a pus formation. Again, what was the pus? The pus is always mixed with the blood. So there is a serous blood. So it is a yellowish discharge. As I mentioned, that all sulphur is yellow discharge. So you have to remember very easily. Yellowish discharge from the eyes, ear, nose, okay, all skin. And in the skin, it produces boils, carbuncles, wound, pimples, scabs, skin disease, sores, etc. So most of its actions on the skin, the surface of the body. Okay, ectodermal layer. The discharge is yellow, tinged with the blood. A general swelling of the soft fur, threatening to the pus, and establish vent using pus is called for calcarea salt. So there is two things. There is a swelling of the pus or a pus without vent. And when the vent is also open, you can also use this calcarea salt, provided the pus is yellow in 
कल दैट इज द ओनली इंडिकेशन ऑफ सल्फर सो वट आर द पैथोलॉजी यूज मोस्टली इट इज यूज इन दर डिसऑर्डर्स सो ओटाइटिस मीडिया येलो पस ओके येलो पस अलॉन्ग विथ दर इज अ ब्लड सो यू कैन यूज दिस रेमेडी ओके बॉइल एबसेस अल्सर कार्बन गल्स फेस्टरिंग टेंडेंसी सो पर्सन हुए टेंडेंसी टू द बॉइल्स ओके पिंपल्स ऊजिंग स्कैब हर बीस अगेन इन हर पीस देर इज अ पस्टूस येलो पस देन एंड देन यू कैन इफ हर पीस इज ट्रांसपेरेंट कलर नेट्रम यूज द रेमेडी Okay, but herpes is yellow color, pustular infections. Then the calcareous sulfur is the indicated. Suppurating glands. So these are the uh, the sphere of action of calcareous sulfur. So you got what calcareous has? Calcareous floor is a bone hardness. Calcareous floor bone mineralization. Calcareous sulfur skin. That's all. The pathology is certain important. Now we will go to the ferrum pus. So. In the ferrum pus phosphate of iron we have the mechanism that our body is uh, the our rbcs is composed of the iron and iron is for the oxygenation okay we are providing all the cells the basic nutrition of the our life so in every cases of disease or disorders when it start say for example a defense start in the form of inflammation you can directly use this remedy in each and every cases so ferrum pus is very important again in which potency 12x okay fine so it is the mostly found in the red blood cells and every cells of the body the property of attracting the oxygens from the ill and air so disturbances and deficiency happen in what when the deficiency of these cells the oxygenation has gone down so when the oxygenation has gone down the functioning of the every cells has been reduced so in that form it relax the muscular tissue with the inflammation and produce fever so what is the cell uh, injury when the cell is not getting proper nutrition no oxygenation cells started inflamed so inflammation provide what vasodilatations and blood accumulations so this is what the ferrum pus is the remedy when the deficiency is there there is the process so what happen if we prescribe ferrum pus it produce congestion heat so this is the sign of inflammation a dollar collar rubber tuber and punctuation sign of inflammation so in the inflammation fever heat congestion throbbing swelling with the innumerable succeeding ills so this is what something that we, we call as ferrum pus is biochemic antisorbic remedy You know, ferrum pus is a biochemic antisorbic remedy. So when the sore has started, sore has begin, inflammation has begin, then you can prescribe ferrum pus in each and every cases. Okay, very easy to use. So the first remedy to be used in every acute, acute uh, attack of acute illness, this is the first in every. It is from the bronchitis through the tonsillitis. It is the least is so much so vast. It is just I have written these two things. So from B to T, and it is from the blood, and is a red marker said is it is a universal remedy. So red marker has said it is a universal remedy. The same way when the Hanuman has mentioned that the sulphur is the antisorbic remedy in our homeopathic material medica, whereas in a biochemic, the ferrum pus is the universal remedy. So in each and every case of acute disease, you can directly prescribe ferrum pus to each and every case. Okay. So and mostly the ferrum pus. due to the lack of this iron what happen anemia and it happen because of blood loss so when there is a hemorrhage when there is a hemorrhage of bright red blood and anemia you can directly prescribe ferrum pus this is anemia from the blood loss so the vast range of action of the ferrum pus all itis comes into the range of ferrum pus bronchitis gastritis laryngitis mastitis nephritis pericarditis peritonitis phlebitis pleuritis tonsillitis as a primary remedy in each and every case okay again it is not related to only inflammatory process it goes beyond also so it produce abscess rheumatism again it act on the blood vessels and blood cells it produce hemorrhage also so it is a syphilitic state boil catarrhal conditions congestions inflammation cough croup deafness diarrhea earaches swellings so swelling swelling associated with the heat and congestion the only remedy is ferrum pus 
okay there is a fever headache so fever of different kind it is a pleurisy quincy scarlet fever sprain and wound so when you find a sprain you can use two remedy in it is book it was written that when you have a acute sprain you have used two remedy one is a ferampos another one is a silica why silica i will give you later because silica has act on the connective tissue so it re establish the connective tissue and what happen per sprain in a sprain it is acting on the ligaments or muscles or tendons so muscles and nerve ligaments are the connective tissue which is being torn so silica will help them to re establish again their mechanism so in day you use this both remedy ferampos and silica for the spray acute spray okay another remedy so when we learn this ferampos uh, uh, so there is the progression of the disease so when we go to the miasmatic state from sora this is ferampos is sora when when we progress to the soro to soro psychotic or psychosyphilitic or syphilitic we have the different different remedy so calimune is the remedy for the soro psychotic or a psychotic stage of our inflammations okay so what is the psychotic stage of inflammation it is called as a chronic inflammation when there is acute inflammation for a ferrum force of the remedy when there is a chronic inflammation calimune is the remedy so what was the calimune calimune is found indicated in as i mentioned mure is white in color so there is a white grayish white discharge grayish white coated of the tongue especially in the catar catar means there is a inflammation but that inflammation is in a chronic form okay especially used in the ear disease catar of the middle ears and the closed eustachian tube so its sphere of action is very specific when the patient comes to you with the ear ache deafness ringing inflammation chronic inflammations of the ear c s o m but no discharge there is only pain patient has a pain in the throat catar of the throat and the patient says there is a grayish white coated of the tongue thickening hardening then you can use this the remedy okay cracking noise so this is noises in the ear the eustachian catar cough hoarseness bronchial tube so mostly calimune has actions on the throat and the respiratory affections also there is a sluggish liver and due to the sluggish liver there is a light color stool okay lung disease with the grayish white expectoration so most of so one exper uh, experiment happened during the covid time uh, some of the my friend doctor uses calimure in the cases of the covid cases when there is a thickening of the blood this is something that they found that in the covid pathology there is a dryness of the mucous membrane and a thickening of the uh, bronchi and everything this leading to there is a hardening of the lung parenchyma uh, and uh, uh, what we called as honeycomb appearance in the ct scan so in that case they prescribed calimure biochemic 6x to resolve this plastic exudate and this plastic exudate help to resolve and the patient has recovered from the biochemic soil so this is another in uses of these things in our clinical practice so this is what when we find like ferampos it is used as a intercurrent remedy in many cases now why intercurrent because if it is acute inflammation ferampos if this inflammation goes beyond then you can add calimune into that so this is intercurrent so what are the uh, <coughs> pathology the calimune is so when there is a plastic exudation is happening what plastic exudation exudation means something that is a discharge become dried up when the healing and it is a thick and plastic coated like so this is something called as a dry fibrinous structure so the, when you find this you can think calimure again calimure has a softness calcarea floor has a hardness so when you find a soft indurations when you find a soft thickening you can prescribe calimure when you find a hard stone is thickening you can prescribe calcarea floor very dangerous so mostly the abscess adhesions in a rheumatism uh, asthma bronchitis congestion cold catar coryza constipation so these are the list of remedy list of the pathology but mostly you can think that white exudations softness and chronic inflammations you can directly think of calimbe okay mostly hemorrhage 
See, in a parent force, hemorrhage is bright red. Where here, the hemorrhage is dark. Again, what kind of hemorrhage? In the, the, the hemorrhage is thin. Parent force hemorrhage is thin. Here, the hemorrhage is clotty. So, this is something that is a fibrin exudate is there in the kalimio. So, this is clotted. So, when you find the mens is clotted, mens is clotted and thick and dark, you can directly prescribe kalimio. Okay, when you find mens is black, you can prescribe caliphos, a dynamia. When you find pale menses, you can prescribe natrium mu. When you find bright menses, so much so average, you can prescribe ferrum pos. So these are the indications that in each and every case, according to characteristic, you can prescribe a certain biochemic remedy. And that is helping you, the patient. When there is a uh, hem, uh, menses associated with the colic, severe colic and cramps, the remedy is made for. Simple. So it is very easy to make this well sorted into therapeutic indications. So I will just give you the uh, hint. When you find there is a gland inflammation, but the gland is a soft in nature. When you palpate the gland, it is a lumpy and soft and inflamed. There is a swelling, but there is no heat and congestion. Kalimio. If it is a heat and congestion, fair and false. Clear? Very easy. So same way, Kalimio, the fever. So what kind of first stage of fever? It is the second stage of fever. Low grade fever, fever continuous. Okay, this type of. And fever goes into a dynamic stage. A dynamic stage means the toxic fever or a septic fever. The remedy change from Kalimio to Kalifos. Or Okay, so this is psychotic, purely soro psychotic or a psychotic in nature. Calcarea flow is a psychotic in nature, hardness. Calcarea force is a soric and deficient. Ferrum force is a soric. Calcarea self is a soro psychotic or soro syphilitic because there is a blood streak pus. So it, is, it can go into syphilitic also because some carbon culture is a syphilitic in nature. So same way it is a psychotic and what is psychotic? A disease of the mucous membrane with a white coated exudate. So everywhere in the mucous membrane, if the mucus is thick, white, you can think of Kalimio. Again, mucus is thick but transparent, the remedy is not remedy. And sometimes it is a thin and transparent, remedy is not remedy. Okay? So it also acts on the mucous membrane. We have Kaliphos, so it is a potassium phosphate. So Kaliphos is, see, calcarea phos is a cell wall salt. Okay? So same way the Kaliphos is a nerve salt. So it is mostly abundant found into the brain. Brain cells, nerve cells, nerve fluids. Why? Because potassium has capacity to change the impulse or it will uh, stimulate the action potential gate. Okay, voltage gated ion channel and action potential gated ion channel. So that is the impulse is passing. So natrium and potassium both are useful in the brain cell. So mostly the potassium is not there. So potassium, if there is an absent in the body, what happens? The brain cells is functioning is become weaker. And when the brain cell functioning weaker, it can go to different different kind of disorders. What type of disorders you will see? So it is mostly found in the brain cell, nerve fluid, blood plasma, mostly the white corpuscle. So when there is a septicemia, white corpuscle is increasing. Why? Because of lack of caliphos salt. Okay? So it is intercellular and intercellular fluids. So this remedy is very important when there is a septic condition is going on. You can prescribe in a septic condition. So when there is a deficiency of this, so it produces two ways. Brain has controller system, so it produces mental symptom also as well as physical symptom also. So in a mental symptom, it produces despondency, anxiety, fearfulness, weak memory, mental decay, mental and physical breakdowns, neurasthenia, hypochondriasis, hysteria, insomnia, night terror, irritability, insanity and paralysis. That means this remedy is a mental remedy of the biochemics form. So when you find neurasthenia, nerve affection syndrome, the brain is fagged, okay? In that case, you can stimulate the by Kali force. 
again in which conditions the brain is more utilized so person develop diabetes our newer understanding of diabetes is something that in a diabetes the body's defense mechanism is that that the glucose has increasing in the blood circulation now we understand that the brain has the out of whole body brain utilize 20% of the whole glucose from the circulation so when there is a lot of conflict is happening in our body so brain take up the more glucose because brain is deprived of glucose that's why the blood circulation more increase so when you provide this fault into this the glucose level goes down so mostly in diabetic condition due to the stress induced diabetes or uh, psychosomatic diabetes then you can think of this remedy caliphos is the indicated remedy neurasthenia of diabetic people brain fog of diabetic people insomnia of diabetic people sleeplessness of diabetic people mental disorders with the diabetes you can directly think of caliphos okay physically what physically physically decomposes the white cells or blood plasma and produces the septic conditions mostly in the typhoid typhus scurvy and ulceration so this is a syphilitic remedy this is the syphilitic remedy so when you find any syphilitic disorders you can think of caliphos so it in a syphilitic state what happen there is a degenerated state there is a foul discharge there is a gangrene there is a blackish thin blood and the putrid condition so when there is a menses blackish and thin kali pos when the menses is dark and clotted kali mule when the menses is bright red param pos okay when the menses is pale and thin natural cure so you can easily uh, make it so in general we have to remember this medicine is dk at mental as well as physical Never. So carry forces for the them. so there are a lot of uh, pathology which are there. So softening of the brain, sexual weakness, septic conditions, mental derangement from the nervousness to the dread, horror, mm -hmm. nervous paralysis, night terror, palpitations, everything. When you go to the physical sphere, mm -hmm. when there is a gangrene, when there is a blackish discharge, there is a cholera, flu, diphtheria. Diphtheria is also a toxic condition. Okay. hemorrhage blackish and thin and there is a suppuration which is foul and there is a blackish in this charge you can think of caliphos okay so very easy i don't go into the name of the disease but you can go through this process okay caliph self the potassium sulfate the sulfate of potash so in a caliph self as we have seen caramphos is the salt in effect in the transfer of the inhaled oxygen and it is found nearly all the cells containing the iron so this is the one is a carrier and one is a transporter so carry self is a transporter of transporter of the oxygen whereas the ferrum force is the carrier okay so this is the different thing so when the carry self is uh, deficient what happen physically so there is a lack of transport of the oxygen to the particular part what happen there is a weakness weariness tiredness heaviness peripheral circulation goes down so there is a coldness and chilliness of the peripheral parts due to that there is a headache there is a pain in the limb lack of circulation to brain to cause is vertigo so these are the indication that the transport system is disturbed okay again what happen in psoriasis there is a secondary development of the uh, blood vessels because the cells is deprived of the oxygenations and the nutrition part that's why the secondary uh, vasculature is develop and there is a, so it causes disquamation so when there is a deficiency of this salt the carrier is not there so skin has disquamation when you provide this carrier blood circulation become proper and that due to blood circulation become proper there is a proper oxygenation so cell cannot get dried up and there is no scarring very important aspect of understanding so in that case so the classical understanding is that when the person is tired physically out of lack of nutrition kali salt is the remedy along with the things that the person get better in open air like pulsatilla person get better in the cold atmosphere ac room 
person get aggravated in the warm climate, warm room, care itself is the remedy. Okay, so these are the indications. It is also called for same. I had said the disquamation. So in disquamation, mostly after fever, like a scarlet fever, measles, there is a scaly skin, yellowish eczema, and the dandruff. Again, salt yellow is the color. So yellow is of the discharge, scales and everything. Very important. There is in the therapeutic it is mentioned when you find the dandruff, which is yellow in color, no other remedy. is prescribed just kali sal is the indicated remedy okay that is what the thing and when there is a discharge is yellow so you can find out exudation secretion yellow and again the tongue is yellow or yellowish coated very easy so there are the uh, indications that uh, you can use kali sal in the bronchitis albuminuria diphtheria dropsy vertigo asthma everything happen because of lack of oxygenation to the particular part okay lupus skin disease measles menstruation leukorrhea indigestion diarrhea disorders of the eyes in all that there is a discharge is yellow and the patient is better in the open air this is indication of the calcium we have magnesium phos magnesium phosphoric <coughs> phosphate of magnesia so this is the things which is found in the blood cells muscles brain spinal marrow now bone and teeth again we have calcium in the bone magnesium is also bone okay now what was the indication that this what is deficient what is happening if calcarea floor is deficient what is happening it produce thickening and hardening but if magnesium phos is deficient what it produce it stimulate the nerves because it is has it is spinal marrow and it is in the brain so it stimulate the nerve and it by stimulating now it produce a pain so it is the remedy for the pain pathway it is the uh, we call it is a prostaglandin inhibitors analgesic homeopathic analgesic or biochemical analgesic remedy so we can use this as a prostaglandin blocker so in that it produce sharp pain cramps and finally the paralysis and what was that the patient the modality is very important in magnesium that patient was better from the warm again calcium is aggravated from the warm whereas magnesium was better from the warm and home pressure but when you home pressure with the deep pressures okay so magnesium post patient say that so massage karte hai to acha lagta hai but if someone touches slightly then the nerve gets stimulated and they feel the pain so this is what very very important so slightest touch light touch aggravate and the pain is something very important it is a sharp lancinating type of pain so when you find sharp lancinating pain you can find this in the neuralgia you can find in the toothache you can find in the prosopagia or face ache you can find the stimulations of the nerve it produce excessive stimulation causes convulsions feet spasm cramps also it is happen in the convulsive uh, spasm of the mus muscular cord it produce colic but this goes into continuous spasm of this may lead to the trembling so when there is a trembling you can think of parkinson disease in parkinson disease you can prescribe magnesium phos no other remedy is producing trembling than magnesium phos you can prescribe carry phos also because it is a weakness of the nervous system but this is the remedy this is enhancing calcium phos is a depressive remedy magnesium phos is enhancing remedy of the nervous system are you getting me so it produce palsy trembling twitching hiccup tetanus and it is a pain so pain is a lightening character okay so opposite to the great nerve remedy calcium phos which betokens the degeneration so degeneration of the nerve is there you can think of calcium phos but when there is mac phos is there it produce acute pain it is a stimulator of the nerves whereas it is a depression of the nerve that is the only different so there is in calcium phos a dynamic state mag magnesium phos there is a pain higher the version so these are the di uh, disorders there is a spasmodic condition strictures squinting stridulous spasmodic retention of the urine so when you find every spasmodic condition you can directly think of magnesium phos so it may be a angina it may be a chorea it may be a epilepsy it may be a convulsion it may be a colic 
everywhere there is a spasm or even the toothache it is a spasmodic affection of the nerve we have natrum mu as we learned natrum mu in our earlier uh, lecture of homeopathic point of view but in a biochemic point of view there are the few indications because natrum mu is found in everywhere in the all cells of the human body okay so rightly said by today's speaker the disturbance of the efficiency of this molecule salt which attract the water so the natrum has the capacity of hydro hygroscopic hygroscopic means attract the water okay so it absorb the water from the environment absorb the moisture from the environment and it will retain into the cell if the cell retain more 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 water what happen cell got swell and the cell got swell it may either burst rupture or there is a protoplasm is disturbed so functions also disturbed so this is happening in the natrumure process so what happen water should go into the cells remain in the intracellular liquid and hydraulic state ensue and may show in the various conditions the patient what happen when there is a lot of water inside in the body patient may tired easily patient are chilly patient has a cold extremity and often abnormal craving for the salt these are the classical indications of thyroid disorders so natrum mure is the remedy which is used in the thyroid disorder so when you find the patient has accumulation the patient has started swelling uh, body is going water retention is in the body you can directly think of natrum mure as a indicated remedy and you find that the patient is suspected in case of hypothyroidism and you go for the investigation you found the dsh is rise and everything is low so this is what you can use along with excessive grain for the salt okay again it is everywhere it is found everywhere so in spite of eating well there is a malnutrition and emaciation so and along with that there is a secretion is very clear watery fluid in nature the tears are clear every mucus being clear prothe tongue Watery blisters, coriza clear. Everything is watery. Every discharge is watery, and there is a drossy accumulation of the water, puffiness of the mucus. Mucus membrane may be abnormally dry. So the mucus membrane is dry, but intracellularly there is the more water. Very important. Person says pasina nahi hota. Kitna bhi exercise karta ho, sir pasina nahi hota. Then my body ni pani jama kyu hota hai? मुझे पसीना हुआ तो शायद पानी भी निकले पसीना नहीं होता है वाटर एक्यूमेट करता है दिस इज द क्लासिकल इंडिकेशन ऑफ नेटरम व्हेन यू फाइंड रेपोटरियल इंडिकेशन स्किन ड्राई इनेबल टू प्रस्पायर इवन आफ्टर एक्सरसाइज देयर आर ओनली फोर रेमेडी आउट ऑफ दैट नेटरम यूज द थ्री मार्क रेमेडी ओके सो दीस आर द इंडिकेशन द प्रोसेस दैट व्हेन देयर इज अ वाटर इज एक्यूमेट इन द बॉडी इट कैन कॉज मेनी नंबर ऑफ द डिसऑर्डर्स इन द but so you have to remember that so it produce whites chlorosis anemia coriza or having the leukemia chlorosis a dynamic state along with the swelling pleurisy rheumatism psychosis water brush constipation again all the mood has a constipation you remember constipation because of mental also process we have understood in the natural mood lecture that muriaticum is not allowing to express their feelings they are talk in dispose to so same way i don't want to dispose anything which is dirt so they have accumulated dirt and they pass slowly slowly so there is a stool coming at the verges of x so this is what they are in the constitution so another remedy we have a natrum phosphoricum so phosphate of soda so natrum phos mostly it is found in the blood muscles nerve brain and intracellular same like the natrum mu so what was the difference the difference that it when it, it is helping into the uh, metabolism of the lactic acid cycle so it in lactic acid cycle lactic acid is converted when the natrum force is absent lactic acid is deposited in the muscles and it produce tiredness weakness and acidity in the body so it is called uh, which, which we called as Uh, acid remedy so this remedy when there is prescribed it is a anti acid remedy so we we said lot of people come to us and said 
सर पित्त का प्रॉब्लम है बहुत सारा एसिड मेरे बॉडी में जमा रहता है अम्ल पित्त का प्रॉब्लम है दिस इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज एंटी एसिड रेमेडी सो मोस्ट ऑफ रोमेटोड डिसऑर्डर्स हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ एक्यूमुलेशंस ऑफ द लैक्टिक एसिड इन द बॉडी और यूरिक एसिड सो इट इज इंडिकेटेड इन गाउट एज वेल एज रोमेटोड अफेक्शंस ओके सो व्हाट हैपन इट प्रोड्यूस सावरनेस एंड सावरनेस प्लस द सावरनेस प्लस येलोनेस इज द इंडिकेशन ऑफ नेट्रोम फॉस खट्टा भी है और पीला भी है ठीक है तो इट प्रोड्यूस इरेक्टेशन वॉमिटिंग डायरिया इन इन्फंट एडल्ट एसिडिटी यूरिक एसिड कंडीशन रोमेटिजम ऑफ द जॉइंट गाउट डिस्चार्ज फ्रॉम एवरी कॉर्नर ऑफ द बॉडी इज येलो एंड क्रीम इन कलर ओके देर इज अ डिपोजिशन ऑल्सो येलो एंड क्रीमी डिस्पेपिया सावर एसिड एंड पर्सपिरेशन स्मेल सो ऑल डिस्चार्ज गोज इज सावरनेस सो वी हैव रिमेम्बर टू थिंग सावरनेस एंड येलोनेस these are the indications of natrum fos and it is anti acid remedy so when you find any pit complaint patient says in the language it is a pit problem you can think natrum fos is the remedy so we have acid uh, dyspepsia of everything acidity and again very important it is the remedy for the worm infestations so when there is a worm infestation in the children with a lactic acidosis or the person children who are taking lot of milk and the worm infestations you can think of natrum fos is the remedy okay morning sickness again morning sickness mostly found in the pregnancy so there is in the pregnancy there is accumulations of the lactic acid okay due to the restings and the lot of protein milk and everything and that leading to this so this is what something you can use in the pregnancy also so natrum fos is the remedy natrum sulf again we have a sulf so yellow color is there but along with yellow color there is a greenish color so yellow green is discharge of the natrum sulf sulfate of soda same way as the actions of natrum urea is to attract the water the needed for the cell whereas natrum sulf on the other hand contrary is eliminate the water and waste material from the body so these are the scavengers these are the uh, removal of the toxic materials so when there is accumulations so much so accumulation in the body toxic materials and the patient is suffering from so you can think of natrum sulf okay in short it, it is shown that the tongue again the difference between natrum mure and natrum sulf both has a accumulative tendency but the different that, that is the tongue of the natrum mure is map tongue one thing second is a transparent white whereas the tongue of the natrum sulf is a yellow why because natrum sulf has affinity on the liver so liver has the reaction on the tongue produce yellow color of the coating so yellow green is a dirty brown coating on the tongue along with there is a bilious affections or liver affections so most of biliary tract is affected in the natrum sulf again natrum sulf is a psychotic physiological remedy So it is the accumulations of the physiological bile, and accumulation of the bile causes disturbances of the digestion and accumulation of everything. So this is what the remedy. So bile is accumulated. What happened? Gallstone. So it is the indicated remedy in the gallstone. It emulsifies the bile. Okay. When there is a pain in the gallstone, you can prescribe Mac first because it is a spasmodic conditions. When there is an emulsifier, you can use. natrum sulf okay <clears throat> so due to bilious condition there is a biliousness bilious vomiting bitter water bile vomiting of the bile bilious diarrhea bilious fever yellow fever it is not something yellow fever yellow fever is because of uh, virus but it is something that the fever associated with the jaundice okay so yellowness of the everything and there is a liver affection is there soreness again very important modality of the natrum sulf is aggravation from the damp weather marshy area okay so when there when you found dampness or moisture aggravate and better in the warm surrounding you can directly think of natrum sulf so in surat we are so it is a uh, nearby sea so it is a dampness is more so most of time when you find this kind of remedy useful in our area so these are the indicated so mostly it is associated with the liver problem so it is a bilious remedy again it is the remedy for the diabetes okay.
Susdar has used this remedy in diabetic cases with without any uh, other remedy, and he had cured many patients in a short span of their lifestyle. Okay, so this is a very very important remedy in case of diabetes. Because it has also acts on the pancreas also. Silica, the last one of this are well tissue salt. So it is a flint. In a crude form, it has no capacity to develop any disorder. But when it is triturated, it is very useful remedy in our homeopathy as well as biochemic salt. So it constitutes of the connective tissue, specifically skin, hair, and nails. Okay. So it is helping in connective tissue. But we have all mesodermal affections with the silica. When you find mesodermal affection, deficiency of this salt leading to first in the skin it produces first formation, and this first portion formation goes into destruction of the cell tissues and cells, producing fistulous opening. So when you find fistula, you can directly use this remedy silica. Another remedy which is used in fistula is calcarea fos. Fistula associated with the chest complaint, you can use calcarea fos. Okay, chest complaint means either tuberculosis, either uh, pleurisy, either uh, pneumonia. Okay, or it is alternating chest complaint alternating with the fistula. Calcarea fos and silica, both are the remedy. So in the skin, it produces an oiliness, easily suppurates. Okay, on the nail, it produces dryness. The nutrition is lessened. So nail become dried, brittle, the hard, uh, and also in the hair it is hair falls out and the dry. So it is mostly the important is in the keratin. Silica is the component of the keratin. So when there is a keratin is disturbed, there is a keratinize of the skin disorders, thickening, hardening, dryness. You can think of silica as the remedy. Okay. We have the diagnosis pictet keratolysis. Pictet keratolysis. So in keratolysis also silica is indicated. I had a case of uh, pure case of pictet keratolysis of one of the engineer who came to me uh, that he had no other complaint. He had just in the sole there is a, a small small dots in the uh, sole and the pictet keratolysis. On indications he found that he had lot of perspiration in the foot and palm. He was very very diligent. He is studying in S V N I T student. So in that case, I found a diligent remedy, very very palm sweaty and pitted cured. And I prescribed silica to them, him, and he got cured within three to four months of span, and everything went fine. So this is what the keratolysis. So keratin is affected. You can think of silica. Okay. So along with there is a perspiration. Perspiration is present in the palms and soles, and the perspiration is very very offensive. Very very. Offensive. So this is the silica is the remedy. Again, silica has the capacity to destroy the parts. So it, it is useful in atrophy of the part. Mostly it is atrophy of the connective tissues. Okay. Internal chilliness, sensitive to cold air, wraps up in the warmth. So mostly the silica is chilly, like a parcel covering desire, even in the summer. So we have a list of the disease that it is very curative in the fistulas, boil, carbuncles, even gouty deposit, rheumatism, hip joint disease. Hip joint disease is a uh, it's a connective tissue disorders. Uh, indurations, perspiration of the feet, weight loss, chill pain, headache, suppurations, and the pus, secretion of the rather watery nature. So these are the few clinical indications of uh, this remedy. Which is helping us to select in the biochemical form. So when whenever we are not getting result, as our sir has given a wonderful system uh, that you can use this uh, uh, in a proper sense, then you will get cured of everything. But once you are not getting result out of it, you can use this biochemical system of medicine for the betterment of the patient. Ultimate goal of the physician is to restore the health of the patient. So once you have prescribed this remedy and the patient get benefited from this, this is the system which Suzler has given us from the homeopathic point of view. This is something called as the another birth from the homeopathic system. Okay. So uh, this is the end of our today's session. So hope you got the uh, rough. 
or uh, snapshot idea of prescribing the biochemic salt in your clinical day to day practice there are lot of informations in the books but i have just covered the certain pathological point of view and the certain clinical uh, indications which i have used in my clinical practice as well as i learn in the learn from the books so hope you got uh, every aspect of the biochemical systems and uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, uh, sessions and uh, once again i am thanking you all learners that because of you all learners i am here to share my views with you and those who are learning distance online thank you for the uh, your feedbacks hope i hope uh, more feedback from your side if you like if you uh, get benefited and if you get result from it share your experience with all of us we can share with all of them and thank you for the wonderful session thank you for this all thank you